Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use the Motion Pilot tool to create animations and blend them together. You can use these techniques with a number of different types of motions, including character motion, FFD motion, prop motion, elastic motion, and even image sequences. The same process can also be used for transform, opacity, sprite, and deform animation, and can be triggered via simple mouse movement and clicking. Be sure to check out the Getting Started tutorial for Motion Pilot if you're not yet familiar with it. Let's start by loading up some embedded content and trying it out. You'll find a number of free resources in the Puppet and Path pack, including some actors with their own motion behaviors. For example, this bird character has a bouncing FFD motion that is driven by mouse movement. This phoenix character will follow along with your cursor and flap its wings with mouse click. This spider will have an automatic walking animation whenever the mouse is moved. All of these presets allow you to generate complex animations in seconds with your mouse. You can also puppet your character directly via the Motion Pilot tool, as you can see here with our preview using a regular character. Face cursor is active, so he will always face the mouse cursor, and we can also restrict the Y axis movement to lock our character to only move along the X axis. In the Motion Settings section, you'll find a checkbox for Blend Motion, which will allow you to click and drag to add a walking motion from the Content Manager. You'll notice upon initial preview that we have some foot sliding. To fix that, we can increase the speed parameter, which will speed up the animation upon mouse movement. If you disable Face Cursor, your character can walk backwards but you'll see some sliding. To fix this, simply enable Reverse Animation and your character will have a more solid backward stepping performance. Another option you have is to use mouse click and drive the animation. If click to loop is enabled, then a single click will loop the animation until you click again. Click to play will play the animation a single time upon each click. There is also an option to move in place, which will override any root motions like this run here. This can be useful, especially if you combine it with the mouse movement option as it gives you the same animation, but you can have it go faster and slower under your mouse control. Without the Move in Place option, root motions won't be as useful with Motion Pilot as they already include their own embedded position changes. Again, you can adjust the speed slider to match your character's animation speed with the distance you move the mouse for better results. Let's look at free bone character motion settings next with this cute puppy. You can puppet it the same way as the previous male character, which goes for all character types regardless of bone structure. Let's do something a little bit different here and set the W scale value a bit higher. What this will do is scale its size based on its depth in the scene. I'll then apply a running animation to it, and the result is that our puppy can now run cleanly around the fountain. Let's look at elastic and FFD motions next. If I apply a simple fade in motion template to this yellow light here with click to play enabled, you can see that I can click to activate the fade in effect. I can then go into the flock settings section and with my yellow light selected as the leader object, I can then multi select the other objects and with the delay parameters set, I can begin my puppet of the leader object and the others will follow at a uniform pace a number of frames behind, and also follow the same fade in effect. This is a quick and efficient method to generate something like a group of fireflies as you can see here. Next let's take a quick look at prop motion settings with this simple prop of a skiing dude. 
We essentially have the background moving while the skier is stationary to simulate the effect of going down the hill. Let's start off by activating the simple transform values and disabling face cursor as we're only going to have him facing one direction for the duration. Once again, we can also enable the scale box with uniform scale selected and change the axis to negative Y. This will have the skier scaled down the further up the mouse moves in the viewport, giving us the perception of depth. On top of the scaling, we can also go into the wave section and enable a simple bumpy type move amplitude with a small Y value and low frame duration. Due to the spring bones on this prop, we get a nice sort of bouncing effect from the wave pattern. Finally, I can also add in a pre-saved action sequence as a blend motion that is activated upon clicking. Now we've combined a number of different motion pilot functions together for a comprehensive and detailed animation that can be controlled with simple mouse movements and clicks. Okay, for the final example, let's look at how we can utilize motion pilot with image sequences. The image sequence template shown here can also be found in the Puppet and Path Pack. It contains settings that allow you to use mouse movement to change the images. If we go into Composer mode and look at the Sprite Editor, you can see that this particular prop has a library of four sprites listed in order. With the Sprite Editor, you can easily add, remove, or replace sprites from the prop library, but here I'm going to replace them with a sequence of flame images I've just prepared. This will allow us to activate the four image sequence in any of the ways we've just explored, including simple mouse movement. Hopefully these examples give you some inspiration on how this innovative new tool can be used. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.